This Barbarian Motorworks needs the works. Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, and maintenance. Hi, and welcome to Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance, and restoration. Hi, I'm Chris Capridoni, and the car here beside me is the uh, 2004 BMW 320i restoration project that I started recently. I've now moved on to diagnosing why the car won't start. So I started with um, tackling the electrical issues that the car may be having. With that, I'd most likely be looking at fuses. So I'll be going to the fuse locations, which I'll show, as well as relays, which could be a culprit here in um, certain systems of the car not firing up. Um, but I'll walk you through. Also in this video, I'm going to show you how to test a relay so that you know for sure that a relay may or may not be causing an issue for you. I'll have all the it, it's simple tools. I'll show everyone and walk them through step by step on how to test any sort of four or five pin relay. Okay, one spot to check for fuses and relays in the BMW 3 Series is in the engine bay in the top left hand corner of the engine bay by the driver's side. So it's located under this cover. I've already um, pre unscrewed it, so I'll just move it out of the way. So in here is housed some fuses as well as relays, as well as the um, ECM, the electronic control module for the whole car. If that ends up being an issue, with this vehicle, I will take it out, attempt to open it up and clean it. If that's not the issue, then I may have to replace it, but I haven't ruled it in or out as a potential culprit for the electrical problems of this vehicle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one of the relays and demonstrate later in the video how to test the relays, whether they're getting, they have continuity and whether the circuit open, the coil opens up or not. I'll energize it and show everyone how that's done. The uh, area inside the uh, BMW cabin where you would go to test uh, fuses and relays would be on the passenger side uh, inside the glove compartment or behind the glove compartment and I'll explain. So I've removed the glove compartment. It's just a matter of um, removing six screws and two um, peg clips that hold the um, glove box from dropping down too far, uh, and then you just slide it out. You um, gain access to uh, the main uh, fuse board, which is right here, and it's a good idea to um, systematically check it from time to time to see if you have burnt fuses. Um, that way you can replace them in a timely manner instead of getting a code uh, I check mine about once a year just to make sure I don't see anything going on because some systems you don't use all the time and uh, when you really need them, like on a, a winter day, they won't be working. Now, uh, above that, right up here, I don't know if you can see, there is, once you remove this box, there is um, flat relays that are in there and they can be tested. Uh, some people actually they're held in with bolts, eight millimeter bolts, but you can, uh, and I do, I test them with my uh, multimeter actually in the vehicle. So I touch both nuts with a positive and negative to see if I get a resistance of zero. If I do, I know it's good and I move on. That way I can check all, I think there's six of them in there in a matter of, you know, 15, 20 seconds instead of taking, um, five minutes per to remove them to test them. So just a little neat trick in order to test them quickly. Now, once you lift this out of the way, you can see back here, there are um, an area where there are relays. I'll try and show it. There are relays in there. Um, they may be relays that I need to check to see whether they're working properly. I don't know if I'll get a code when I use the OB2 scanner. Um, but given the fact that I know nothing about this vehicle, I most likely will want to pull every relay and check it to see if I'm getting um, all the proper readings that I want to make sure that it's not just a you know an 80% good uh, relay, that it's a 100% good relay. There is a, a fuse box inside the trunk, but um, as, a, as people know, 
with this vehicle, I do not have access to the trunk because of the other electrical issues that are going on, relay problems, stuff like that. So once I do gain access to that one, I'll be able to replace the battery and um, check all of the fuses and or re re relays that are uh, contained uh, in, in the trunk. Okay, uh, in case anyone's interested in where the OB2 scanner port is inside the car, I'm, I have the camera directed to the um, driver's side footwell, and you can see a little box that's protruding from the bottom. And if you pull on it and snap it down, you'll gain access to the OB2 port. So you can put in your scan tool and do a diagnostics of your, uh, of your vehicle. I most likely would do a video on how to do that. You do need um, specialty scan tools so that you can read all of the BMW codes. An off-the-shelf OB2, OBD2, OBD2 scanner that you can get, um, say, uh, at a parts retailer, automotive parts retailer, might not give you all the codes that you're looking for. You need to have a little bit of a specialty scan tool. Okay, as promised, I, I'm going to be testing your everyday run-of-the-mill uh, re car relay. This is from a BMW, but relays um, are pretty consistent across all manufacturers, all late-day model cars, probably starting from the 1990s or even 80s up onward. So this is the typical uh, relay. Most of them have a little wiring diagram as to how they work on the side, but the pins that are important, um, this is a five pin, are 85, 86, 87, 87A, and then 30. So the first step we want to do is we want to um, check for resistance to make sure that the coil uh, and or resistor inside is actually operating. And the tools that we need to use to do that are a multimeter set to ohms. I'll power it up. And what I'll want to do is test, connect the uh, 85 and the 86 the 85 is the negative ground and the 86 is the positive. And what I want is a reading between 50 and 120. So I've selected 200 so that I can accommodate uh, a reading of 120 um, ohms. So I'll attempt to do it right now. So 85 and 86. Now I'm getting um, 90.4, which is well within that range of 50 to 120. So this is a good relay with respect to this test. Okay, the second test we wanna do is we wanna be able to activate the switch inside. We wanna energize it in some way to make sure that we can hear if it clicks open and clicks closed. So a lot of people like to use a full car battery, but as you can see, I'm using just a simple nine volt battery that's ample power for me to activate the switch or not. And again, we're gonna be focusing on pins 85, the negative, and 86, positive. So I'll hook up the negative to the 85. Now, if the switch opens, once I touch 86, we'll be able to hear an audible click or not. That will indicate whether it's a good fuse or not, or a good relay or not. So I, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear and feel the switch opening. So that means that it's past the second test and it's a good relay. Okay, the final test on seeing whether a resistor is good or not is testing the resistance on an energized uh, resistor. So from the second test, I was checking, energizing, checking the switch. I'll keep it activated and what I wanna do is again in the ohms setting, I have it on 2K. I wanna be able to see what sort of resistance I'm getting between pins 30 and 87. So the 30 is the positive and the 87 is the negative. So I'll connect them now. And the reading I'm supposed to get is a zero resistance, which is zero. So this one here has passed all three tests it is a good relay. It does not need to be um, replaced, just reinstalled in the vehicle. Thanks for continuing to watch the 320i restoration project series. More videos will continue to be published as I move further ahead to bring this BMW back to life and take it back on the track. Remember to subscribe to our channel and like the video.